welcome welcome to issues of life tv this is where we look at life from a godly perspective my name is bola thanks for joining us today so today's topic is quite um interesting and it's personal to me because i really want to share my salvation story how i came to know jesus how how i how i eventually surrendered my life to jesus so of course i knew god but i wasn't really in a relationship with him i've not accepted jesus as my lord and savior at that time i i i was going to church but i wasn't really saved i was even serving in the church but i was not saved when i moved to canada um well yeah when i moved to canada there were some things that happened you know that made me even to be angry at god right when i lost a very close family member and at that point i i was just like why would god take him why would god take him you know and he was like you know it was just so hard it was hard for me to accept but then eventually i realized that it had nothing to do with god but i was angry at god actually i was really angry at god so i was just leaving anyhow not knowing that i was hurting myself you know i was into fornication i was lying i was just living life in the way i felt it was fit but i ended up getting myself into so many troubles and um the more i tried to go away from god the more hurt i was i was i felt battered i felt unworthy i felt used i felt abused because i keep putting myself in the in the lap of men and um, thinking that you know they will complete me always looking for approval for men you know from one relationship to the other if this one leaves me i'm like oh yeah move on to the next person but not knowing that i was giving a part of myself away and not knowing that i was actually damaging myself not knowing that you know there is baggages and soul ties when it comes to going around being with different men so <clears throat> yeah so that was how it all started and then moved here to london ontario you know and at, at that point i was still angry at god so i was still fornicating in relationships and it was awful until one day you know i I had my first car. I was so excited to get a first car. So, and I was driving without insurance. So I got into an accident and the police, of course, were there and they fined me for driving without insurance. And then thank God, you know, God saved me. I wasn't injured, but I was so angry. And look at that. I was even angry at God. I'm like, God, why would you allow this? Not knowing that I was actually working against God. Like I was living in sin. How can I be living in sin and expect, you know, God to be there for me? Because I was working against his will. So anyway, so I was like, God, why would you allow this to happen? And I was still praying that, Lord, please don't let them give me tickets. <laughs> you know, it's so funny how we, we keep praying, but not knowing that our prayers are not actually not being answered because if I'm, if I'm living in sin, you know, God cannot be holding iniquity. He can hear my prayer. The prayer that God hears of a sinner is the prayer of mercy. So look at me praying and all of that. I must say that I was still God's mercy. God's grace was still upon me because if it was not by his grace, I would have definitely died. I would have rapture might have happened at the time I was living in sin. I would have missed it so many ways, but I believe that it was just so, you know, it was still watching me from afar by his mercy he kept me so anyways back to the story and then um I, I was going to the police station to report the accident right because you have to do that so i went there and uh, i saw a gentleman holding a tract he was holding a tract and he was um sharing preaching preaching jesus so i was angry i was nasty at him i was rude at him because i was angry that i you know i just got a ticket so why are you talking to me about jesus and um, pretty much i was pretty much saying where was jesus when i got into an accident but not knowing that it was actually my fault it had nothing to do with jesus you know many times we put the blame on god oh god where are you where are you but god is like am i the one that make you to get <laughs> a car without an insurance and start driving without fully getting a license like hello so that's just by the side anyways at that point the guy preached to me and he gave me the tract and i was like well I, I don't have a car so i can't really go anywhere i can't go to any church right now like that's really how i said it to him very rude 
and he was like oh no problem we have a sister that my where do you live so I, I told him where I live like the intersection and I was like oh okay um there's a sister that you know lives um close by to you she can pick you up and you know i gave i gave the num my get number or i don't even know how it all happened but something happened that I, one way or the other this sister had my number so I'm, i must have given my number to him and then i received a call i believe that sunday of that week and she's like oh i'm calling from um grace assembly london ontario um i'm just calling calling to get pick you up for church i was told to you know and all of that she was very nice and to today we, we are still in, in a relationship I, I mean she's like my auntie <laughs> I don't know if I should mention her name, but I will just not because she might not like it. Anyway, so at that point, um, I started going to church, but I wasn't saved yet. I was serving in church. I was serving in the children ministry. I was, you know, but I was still finding myself falling short. I still find myself going back to the old life, you know, the old life of fornication, you know, being in a boyfriend relationship. My life was not actually saved because I had not surrender my life to Jesus it's so sad because I was serving but I was not saved so if Jesus had come I would have been rapturable you know my I was not saved. I've not for surrender my life to Jesus I was still living insane you know it's it's so sad because it might have been like it might be like a night before I was with a guy and then the following Sunday I go to church still lifting up holy hands <sighs> how how horrible that was but that was my story so um, I kept falling into temptation I kept trying to say oh Lord I will not do it again but then it happened and it happens and it happens and I feel bad I feel battered I feel used I feel unworthy I blame my foundation and my own maybe because I didn't have a father figure or maybe because you know I wasn't whatever I was just blaming every other person except myself not realizing that I have a decision to make I cannot allow my background or my situation or how I was raised or whatever whatever to determine my future or my present but I kept blaming but not actually looking inward and knowing that actually I need to give my life to Jesus because there was no only spirit in me and since there's no only spirit there's no way for you to be able to overcome sin because it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to overcome sin and the Holy Spirit cannot come unless you give your life to Jesus so at that point I have not surrendered my life to Jesus so I was still so I was I guess I was more like religious I was doing things doing things thinking that my doing will help, will save me from my fault for my sins but I will I have not completely surrendered my life to Jesus I have not surrendered my life to Jesus I have not accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior I have not been convicted of my sin I was just doing it was more like a moral moral obligation just doing just doing just doing so afterwards when did I actually give my life to Jesus it's so funny it wasn't at church it was at a concert, a, a gospel concert. There was this um, gospel artist, Donnie McLaughlin. He came to Windsor in 2013 and he had a concert. I went there with the youth. It was an awesome time. And then he began to share his testimony. Honestly, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I believe I was convicted to the point that I was just bawling. I was crying and crying and crying. It was as if my sins were revealed to me. I, I began to understand that, oh, my life is, I'm, I'm actually not saved. I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I need to give my body to him as a living sacrifice and offer it to him as a living sacrifice. So I, I went to the front. I actually did an altar call. I, I went to the front and I gave my life to Jesus. That was the day that I gave my life to Jesus. That was the day that I had an encounter with Jesus. That was the beginning of my journey as a Christian. So I gave my life to Jesus and everything else changed. I did not want to continue to fornicate. I did not want to continue to sin against God in many other ways. You know, there are other sins that I might not like lying, you know, cheating whatever it was i just did not want to do that anymore i begin to understand that jesus has bought me with a price and i don't want to to to, to rubbish that price i begin to understand the sacrifice that god made for me that he actually sent his only son jesus to die on the cross for my sin and he bought me with his own precious blood 
his son, I began to realize that I am more than this. I am precious to him. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. And no man, no relationships should complete me. What I am looking for, I cannot find in a man or in a relationship with, with boyfriend or whatever. I can only find in Christ. And then my eyes begin to open. It was as if the scale removed. And I begin to see that, what, what was I thinking? So that was how all relationships ended. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep myself until when I find the right person. So I pretty much surrendered everything to God. I offered myself to God. I said, God, here I am. Just have your way in me. And I confessed. You know, I felt so horrible. My sins were right in front of me because I saw how scarlet they were, how red my sins were. And but right away, I also felt this guilt and condemnation lifted off because now i see that jesus has paid the price it's like you just wipe away all my sins as as much as they were he wiped them all away and he gave me a new slate a new beginning and he says all things have passed away all things have become new so i became like that newborn baby with a new beginning and nothing else really matters because there was no more guilt there was no more condemnation i was delivered i was redeemed I am still redeemed but at that point i felt a transformation the things that i used to do the way i used to dress i did not want to do them anymore people were actually seeing the transformation like oh bola wow look at you i did not want to listen to those secular music anymore because i used to like listening to secular music dancing and all of that shaking my body dressing in a very seductive way i did not want to do that anymore because i knew that doing that makes me sh feel cheap and I'm like, Jesus has bought me with a price. I can't just continue to offer myself to, to bring about seduction to other men and all of that. I have to carry myself in such a way that brings honor. I am princess of the most high God. So I have to carry myself in that manner. So all the dressings and all of that, the cleavage and all of that that I was doing and my hair and the makeup that was just all, all over in people's face, you know, trying to get attention and all of that. I had to stop. In fact, it was the Holy Spirit that convicted me. That's the right way. It wasn't like I just decided to stop like that. The Holy Spirit was working in me because I gave my life to Jesus. And once you surrender your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and he begins to lead you. Oh, don't do this. Do that. And because you love God and because I decided to, to appreciate what Jesus has done on the cross for me. And I just fell in love with God. And I was like, God, I just want to do anything that pleases you. You did this for me. Oh, the least I can do is to please you and live for you and, 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 and offer myself to you. So every time I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me, don't do it this way. Wear this. I look at you. You are, you are the daughter of the Most High God. You can't carry yourself in this manner. Look at your skirt. It's so tight. It's showing your buttocks. You need to dress appropriately. And I begin to change my ways. And all this will begin to help me to change my ways. There was transformation from the inside out. Now, my service actually had meaning now. I was actually serving out of love, not out of fear, not out of trying to, to hand forgiveness. But because now I have received that forgiveness and now I'm doing it because I love God. I'm doing it because I want to to let other people know, experience that love. My heart was, you know, desiring to just win souls for Christ. I just want to win, tell someone about Jesus because I knew where I came from. And I knew that if Jesus can save me, <laughs> then definitely he can save you. He can save anyone else. You know, I can't go too deep into my past because they were just so deep and so horrible. But I'm just giving you an highlight of it so that you can see that you know the one that you see today was not who i was before but jesus was walking in between and transformed my life and gave me a new beginning so that was how my journey to following jesus started and since then it has been a wonderful journey of course there have been ups and downs which is mainly my fault not as nothing to do with god but god has been faithful holding me and showing me his mercy and being so loving and caring and and i've been experiencing his grace and his mercy and his favor and many miracles that i've experienced from just by giving my life to jesus so that's that's the summary of my story that's the story of my salvation story so you're listening to me 
you know i don't know what you have been through i don't know what you have done i don't know what it is that you feel like can jesus save me oh my jesus is, is for you he's actually died for you he died for people like us <laughs> he's a faithful god he loves you he, he, he god loves you and that is why he gave his only begotten so while we were yet sinner the, the jesus has already paid the price even while I was living in my sin. He was just waiting for me to come to him. So while I was yet sinner, Jesus died on the cross for me. It wasn't because of what I've done or what I have not done. It was because of his mercy. And that same mercy is available to you as well. He's able to give you a new beginning. He's able to rewrite your story and give you a new beginning. If you will truly realize what he has done for you and accept that mercy and accept that love and accept him as your Lord and Savior. And to do that, just believe and say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God and I know you died on the cross for my sins. Please wash me by your blood. I am a sinner. Please forgive me for all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can live a life that is pleasing unto you. I want to know you more and I want to be closer to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. By that, with that prayer by faith, you are now born again. So just talk to God and, and, and pour out your heart to him and let him know, you know, everything. He sees it all anyway. We want you to just be vulnerable to him. Amen. Well, that is it for today. <laughs> so if you just give your life to Jesus, find yourself a Bible believing church and um, begin to learn of him, learn of God and pray concerning way to fellowship and God will guide you truly in Jesus name. So thanks for listening to my salvation story just a summary of it uh, but i'm sure it has blessed you so like like and share you know comment down below share 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 as this might just be your own way of reaching out to someone out there that might be will that, that might just be waiting to hear a message like this so they can give their life to jesus god bless you until next time bye bye TV. Issues of life, TV. Guard your heart. Guard your heart.